There are plenty of ways to make money online, but none quite like becoming a YouTube celebrity. Making money through YouTube not only means you have a very stable source of large income without putting in that much work, but it also means achieving some measure of actual fame. If you make it big on YouTube, people will recognize you in the street, and it can even end up leading to other opportunities for your business. This is how celebrities are made in the digital age, so why not get involved? Of course, this is not what a YouTube celebrity will actually tell you. They'll say they've got it hard, that making content for YouTube is more difficult than it looks, and Google takes most of their commission. This may be true, but at the end of the day, they're still often making a video a day maximum, and often only a video a week, and they're still making huge amounts of money for talking on camera about something they love. But don't get me wrong, none of this is to say that becoming a YouTube celebrity is a get-rich-quick scheme, not by any stretch of the imagination. In fact, making money on YouTube is not easy at all, and there is a definite skill to this and a fair bit of luck involved too. A lot of people work incredibly hard at their YouTube content for years, never to see any real returns on it. So the question is, how do you go about exploding your content and building an effective business model on YouTube? How can you become the next big YouTube sensation? And what if you don't have a dashing camera smile? This video series is the answer. Here, you're going to learn absolutely everything you need to know to practically guarantee your success on YouTube. You'll learn not only how to build a massive audience in no time at all, but also how to make the most of that audience. You'll see how you can make money from advertisements and from sponsors. You'll discover growth hacking tricks to accelerate your progress. And you'll see how to make an effective YouTube channel without even setting foot in front of the camera. This series is your blueprint for YouTube success, and if you follow it exactly, you'll be giving yourself the very best chance of massive success on the platform. When creating pretty much any business online, whether it's an affiliate marketing business, a blog, or anything else, the first question you'll often need to ask yourself is, what is it going to be about? Or to use the correct internet business parlance, what is your niche, or niche as some people pronounce it. A niche is a subject that will appeal to a specific audience. An example of a niche would be sewing. Now, sewing is something that appeals largely to older women, but also a lot of younger women these days who are interested in arts and crafts. And of course, some men like sewing too. You know, let's not stereotype here. Either way, most people are either interested in sewing or they're not. Thus, it has a niche appeal and gives you a specific target audience. You can go even more niche if you like, though, and choose crocheting or bird sewing patterns. But the more niche you go, the more narrow your audience. Another example of a niche is fitness. Now, fitness is a much larger niche because it will appeal to a huge proportion of the population. Nearly everyone will want to get fitter at some point in their lives. It's still a very specific subject matter that will talk to a very specific type of person, but it's a much broader niche. When it comes to internet business, the key often boils down to finding the right niche, and this will often mean finding a niche that has a broad appeal while not being overly competitive. The problem with the health and fitness niche is that you're going to be going up against a huge number of other channels. Some big names in this space include the Hodge Twins, Athlean X, Bodybuilding.com, Rob Riches, and Elliot Hulse, to name but a few. Many of these channels have been around for years now and have millions of subscribers and huge amounts of money to spend on marketing. That means if you want to go up against them with a video on how to get abs, you might well struggle to get your video to a position where it will actually be seen and clicked on. But on the other hand, a YouTube channel about crocheting cat patterns 
probably won't get looked for very often and will quickly reach its peak, leaving you with nowhere else to go. And of course, a big cap on how much you can possibly earn. So you need to choose the right topic and to find that sweet spot. So how do you find your niche? A good option is to start with the bigger niches and then to focus down and find yourself a smaller sub-niche within the niche. So to start with, let's look at what the very biggest niches are and what the most lucrative ones are. In general internet marketing, the biggest niches are fitness, dating, self-help and making money. This is because all of these subjects are things which have a hugely broad appeal and which will appeal to practically everyone. If you have the marketing budget, then you can reach the biggest potential audience this way. At the same time though, these niches are huge because they have something else going for them. Value proposition. Each of them has something very big and important to offer people. An emotional hook that makes people more passionate about a channel. So, for example, fitness isn't really just about getting into shape. It's about being more confident, sexier, healthier and happier thanks to your training and your diet. People hope that by watching these channels, they can turn their lives around. The same goes for money and dating. These offer complete lifestyle changes. They let people find love or get more sex. They allow them to travel around the world and to wear nice watches. They have a real emotional hook and this means the products sold in advertising can charge a lot more. People are much more willing to pay for a book that will make them a billion dollars than they are to pay for a book that can teach them how to sew. But YouTube is a weird place and when you look around YouTube you'll find that these regular rules only partly hold true. But there's actually a lot of other highly successful content there that is just well, just plain inane to be quite frank. Some of the biggest topics on YouTube outside of those big internet marketing favourites are gaming, makeup tutorials, grooming and style, travel, technology, fails, cats, DIY, comedy and lifestyle vlogs. That's a much more bizarre selection of niches. And if you look around, you'll find thriving subcultures celebrating all kinds of other unusual things. There are some very popular YouTube channels, for example, that show people how to transform new Transformer toys. The thing to understand about YouTube is that it's much more visual than a blog or a social media channel. And this means any subject matter that is more visual in nature and more dynamic is almost sure to be a success. Cat videos provide immediate laughs, while makeup tutorials show women how to look their most beautiful and have the proof that it works right there on the screen. And people enjoy watching inane things like vlogs about the everyday lives of YouTube stars because, well, believe it or not, it almost feels like company. People enjoy watching the YouTube channels of people who are like the coolest friend that they'd love to hang out with. YouTube is such a direct, personal format that it's a great way to create almost a relationship with your audience and to thereby make a big impact on them. This works even better if you can sell the kind of lifestyle they find desirable and thereby allow them to live vicariously. A lot of people watch the lifestyle vlogs of rich, attractive people because they want to live those kinds of lifestyles themselves. And, of course, a lot of it is fabricated. Meanwhile, watching someone else play a video game and providing a commentary can be a way to recreate the feeling of hanging out with your mates while playing GoldenEye on the N64 in your youth. And at the same time, you're getting news and footage of new games that you might be interested in. So... How do you bring all these disparate elements together into something that will really work for you? Well, that's a question only you can answer. But a good way to start is to take a broad niche that has a wide appeal and then focus down. For example, you can go with fitness, but find your own way into the industry by making your channel all about fitness for the over 50s. This is a brilliant way to offer something a bit different and a bit unique and thereby stand out from the crowd while still having that value proposition and universal appeal. 
Another thing to always remember is to be true to yourself. Choose the niche you're most comfortable with and you'll find you have much more to say on the matter. You'll come across as much more passionate and interested in your own topic and you'll be better able to inspire your audience to listen to you. I can't tell you which niche you need to pick, but using all this information, hopefully you can come up with something that will have a big appeal while also being true to who you are. Before you dive into your content creation with both feet, let's rewind for a second and assess exactly what this will involve and what it means to be a YouTuber. How does one go about making money on YouTube and how much can you expect to make? It's important you understand the business model here as that is going to affect the way that you approach your content creation and your general approach to making money online. The main way in which you make money on YouTube is via advertising. Google has its own advertising platform and it uses this to allow companies and brands to pay to show their adverts on your channel. This is a form of AdSense for those who know what it is, which means it's PPC. In plain English, this means the advertising uses a pay-per-click system, although you can also get paid when you get a certain number of complete views. In other words, you aren't getting paid a flat fee for your advertising or getting paid per month. Rather, you're getting paid each time the advert is shown and each time someone clicks on it. Of course, not everyone who comes to your channel is going to watch the adverts all the way through or is going to click on them. But you can generally assume by pure statistics that you'll get a certain amount, which is called your CTR or click-through rate. And this means that for every thousand views on a video, you're likely to get paid a certain amount on average. Now, this isn't very much, and to be honest, you're probably going to need hundreds of thousands of views daily in order to make a decent amount of money, and certainly if you hope to make a full-time living from YouTube. But it can be done, and you can get there, if you're willing to not only work hard, but also work smart. Advertising is just one option, however, and there are actually many more ways you can monetize YouTube if you want to. One great example is just to promote a product of your own and sell that. If you can create an ebook, a clothing line, or anything else, you can promote that using your channel and drive sales. And this will work very well if you can focus on that value proposition and promoting the lifestyle as we've discussed earlier. Don't have a product? Well, no problem. You can promote products other creators have made and earn a commission on the sales. This is called affiliate marketing and it pairs particularly well with YouTube, seeing as you can be very persuasive when people actually get to see you talking about the product in person and you can even demonstrate it right on the screen. And finally, you can try and get sponsorship deals. Now this works very well if you're in a visual medium like fitness where it's common to get sponsorship from clothes manufacturers, supplement producers and even companies that make training equipment. You can then demonstrate the products that you're promoting in your videos and that way you can get a lot of exposure for them. Often these companies will pay per video while in other cases they might pay a monthly fee which is up to you to work out with them. Consider these factors and the type of monetization strategy you intend to use at the time that you create your channel idea. Different subjects will make it easier or harder to find sponsors and generally a bit of pre-planning can go an awfully long way. The best way to make money on YouTube and become a massive YouTube celebrity is to actually get out in front of the camera and speak to your audience in person. You want them to get to know you and you want to put your personality across in your videos. This will help to make you considerably more persuasive while simultaneously giving you many more options in terms of what you can create. And if you're going to do that, there's some crucial equipment and software you're going to need to invest in. This can be somewhat expensive, but if all goes to plan, it will pay for itself over time and it will be money well spent. Just as a note here, if you're not comfortable going in front of the camera, you can still be very successful with a YouTube channel and this will reduce what you need to invest in. We'll discuss these alternative options in subsequent videos, so you can skip most of this one for now if that's your intention. 
Let's look at some of the hardware you'll need. Of course, the most basic hardware you're going to need is a camera. And this is what you'll use to capture your footage. And that means the quality of the camera is going to directly influence the quality of your videos. There are numerous factors to consider in this case. One is the resolution, and here you'll need at least 1080 pixels. For now, most people still do not have a 4K display, meaning that you don't need a 4K camera. And 4K creates very large video files, which are hard to move around and edit. But if you want to offer the utmost crispness and also future-proof your setup, then choosing 4K is a great option. Another option is your frame rate. Now, this will generally be either 30 frames per second or 60 frames per second. Once again, 60 frames per second is an optional advantage which will make your footage that much more attractive and give it an almost too real sense of fluidity. It's entirely up to you if you want to push for this very highest level of quality, but some discerning viewers will certainly appreciate it if you do. Some features to look out for include an optical zoom if you're planning on filming outdoors, and this lets you zoom in with no loss of quality, and options to alter the aperture, etc. Good autofocus is very important if you'll be moving around a lot in front of the camera, while being able to use macros to blur out the background is also a nice option. But what's more important really are the practical considerations for your camera. Having a mic jack, for example, is a very good idea because it will give you the ability to improve your sound quality. Likewise, a wide-angle lens is a very good idea if you're going to be moving around a lot and capturing dynamic footage. Something that you should also absolutely consider a requirement is a screen that can be rotated to face forward. This will allow you to make sure that you're in the shot before you start vlogging. And of course, there's no reason you can't do all this using multiple cameras. You know, many people will use both a GoPro for capturing more action-packed dynamic footage and then a regular camera for their vlogging. If you want to go budget, then you can get by using an iPhone camera or a Samsung camera on your phone, you know, as long as it's a newer model. But if you're serious, then you should at least invest in a basic camera along the lines of, say, a Canon G7. Also important is to get a tripod. Is it possible to film without one? Well, sure, you can always balance your camera on a pile of books on top of an ironing board. But you'll find out that lining up good shots ends up taking a lot more time than you will be willing to go through on a regular basis if you take this approach. A tripod will thus save you a huge amount of time while also getting better angles, thereby giving your channel a higher quantity and quality of videos, which is obviously going to be a very good thing in terms of getting lots of views. Another thing to look for potentially here is a tracking head from the likes of Manfrotto, who also make tripods. This will allow you to attach your camera on top of your tripod and then let you perform panning shots and slow zooms. This is what will give your footage a much higher level of professionalism and it's very important if you're planning on doing product reviews and want to feature slow pans of the items you're reviewing. These work by providing friction on a rotating pivot and a handle. You then gently push on the handle with just a finger or a palm and the resistance will keep the motion slow and smooth as it gradually moves around the object in focus. It's important to use a manual focus during these shots rather than an automatic one. It's often said that the best lighting is natural lighting. To get a great shot, try to line yourself up so that you have a large window letting in natural light from the side. This will give you what's known as Rembrandt lighting, which is a professional and very flattering looking type of lighting. But while this type of lighting is highly desirable, it's not terribly reliable. You can't trust in natural light to always be available when you need it, and you can't limit yourself to only filming at certain times of the day. So you need to make sure you have a way to set up the perfect lighting when you need it. How are you going to do that? Well, with some kind of lighting setup. And a great choice is to get two soft boxes. 
Now, these take up a fair bit of space, but it's worth it as it will allow you to design your lighting however you wish and make sure that your subject matter is well lit and that your footage is clear and bright. Now, don't underestimate this. In fact, in many cases, it can be more important to ensure your footage is very light and very bright than it is to use a camera with a high definition. This will make your footage look more professional and more appealing to watch. Want to go one step further? Well, depending on the nature of your videos, you can get creative here if you want. Jonathan Morrison has a YouTube channel that's all about showcasing technology products in the very best possible way and making them highly desirable. This gets him a lot of views and helps him to sell a lot of affiliate products, which of course means that manufacturers are happy to work with him and to supply free products for review. One trick he uses to accomplish this is to use coloured lighting. He'll often light phones and other gadgets in a bright pink, green or purple hue on a white background which makes them look more modern and more crisp, especially with his high quality video equipment. The great thing is that coloured bulbs are actually very affordable, so this is something you can mimic fairly easily yourself should you want to. Just like it's important not to underestimate the importance of your lighting, you also need to ensure that you never underestimate the importance of your sound quality. If you want to make your video look and sound professional, then it's absolutely crucial that you have good quality sound and don't just get a muffled sound into a regular camera microphone from a distance. Things like acoustics matter, and even if your viewers don't notice the difference, they'll be able to feel the difference. Things like this make a massive psychological impact and can be the difference between a channel that has high production values and that people love to watch and one that looks unprofessional and that nobody takes seriously. Fortunately, sound is a relatively easy thing to get right and the best way to do this is with a basic external microphone. You can get a lapel mic also known as a lavalier mic, easily enough, and then attach it to your phone or camera to record your audio at the same time. Better yet, find a high-quality microphone that you can plug directly into your camera's mic jack. The Blue Yeti Snowball microphone is one of the most popular choices among YouTubers right now, and it is a very affordable option that will provide a crisp and clear sound quality very easily. As well as hardware, you'll also need to invest in some basic software and other intangibles. The most obvious thing here is your editing software, which you're going to use to take your footage and turn it into something that has a narrative structure and that's actually fun to watch. There are plenty of options here, which include Sony Vegas, Final Cut Pro X, iMovie, and Adobe Premiere with After Effects. Your choice will depend on personal preference, budget and your computer. But either way, you will need a professional editing suite in order to make your videos look the part. This is what you use to cut and stitch together your footage and it's what you use to add things like music and logos. There are numerous graphics you'll also want to add to your videos. For example, you'll probably find you need some kind of logo to overlay on top of your videos if you want to build a brand. This is important as it will help to ensure people know who you are and that your videos and content are from the same creator. A good logo should be coupled with a good name and ideally the two together should be enough to communicate everything new viewers need to know about your brand. If you get this just right, then people should be able to tell from those things alone whether they'd be interested in your channel and potentially subscribe with no further information. Other graphics will also come in handy. For example, you might want to use bottom thirds which you will overlay on top of your video as a way to annotate what's happening on the screen. Then you might want to find some stock images that you can use to illustrate points that you're making or that you can use in conjunction with your recorded footage. On top of this, you'll need to look into video and sound for your videos. 
One important thing here is a video opener, which is a short clip that will play at the start of your videos and help you to further cement your brand while indicating that the video has started. Music can be very useful and would allow you to make your videos a lot more engaging while also being able to invite emotional responses. So, where do you find all these extra materials? One answer is to pay for your materials to be created on a site like Fiverr or Upwork. These sites will allow you to find freelancers who can create your materials for you and make them look very professional. Again, it's a small investment, but it's very much worth it seeing as how much use you'll be getting out of these things. So, once you have your equipment, you're ready to start creating your footage and uploading it to YouTube. So, what's the average day like for a YouTuber? How do you go from start to finish and save yourself as much time as possible? Well, everyone works differently but it's certainly worth coming up with a workflow to minimize the amount of time and effort that will go into making videos. It's very important that your content be uploaded regularly in order to avoid losing your subscribers. And with that in mind, you need to be able to rely on a simple process to keep making more videos. To start with, you should try to keep an area in your home or studio ready for filming at all times. Designate a corner of an office or somewhere else to record your footage. That way, you won't have to get everything out and set everything up each time you want to film. It'll be there ready for you to go right away. This also means you can create a set for yourself and a backdrop. This is very important because it will once again greatly improve your professionalism. You don't want to record footage of yourself talking in front of an untidy bedroom with clothes strewn everywhere nor do you want to record in an untidy office or any other part of the home that just looks like someone's house, unless, of course, your niche is about something for the home. Rather, your aim is to make a professional-looking set that will help to reinforce the lifestyle that you're trying to promote. Now, this might mean that you set up an area in your home to reflect what you're trying to say about yourself, and this could be a very clean and modern-looking desk setup, for example, or it could be lots of comics and film merchandise. Another option is to use a completely white background, which is achievable with your lighting equipment and a white wall, or even a bedsheet pulled taunt. Or to print out a large canvas or poster that you can use for your backdrop. Or you can use a system called Chroma Key and insert a background in post-production. Whatever you eventually decide, just make sure you have everything right where you need it and you know just where to stand and you have somewhere to prop a script. A good tip is to write yourself something of a script before you start, but to be generally quite relaxed in the way that you stick to this script. You know, it's fine to work from it rather than reading it out verbatim. Another tip is to break your script down into lots of smaller pages. This way you can glance at the next section, perform it, and then move on to the next part. If you have a big enough storage card, then you can record everything in one take and then subsequently edit into a video that people will want to watch. But to do this, you also need to make it as easy as possible for yourself. You can do this by moving slightly each time you perform the next page. This will not only help you to see when you got the take right when looking at the footage in the editor, you'll know that the take just before you moved was the right one, but it'll also make it much more dynamic video as you'll be moving position on the camera as you speak. This makes it easier to edit in cuts too, as when you cut, you need to either keep your position the exact same or make it purposefully very different. You, know, you can't just move slightly as this will look like an awkward twitch. Another tip is to clap at the start of each new section. Why? Because that will make it easier for you to see the audio spike in the editor. One more. When recording your footage, always leave long spaces before and after each take and generally record much more than you think you're going to need. This will give you more to work with in editing. You should also set up your mic separately, remember. And if you're using a lapel mic, then you just need to plug in your phone and slip it in a pocket while you perform your shots. 
you can do this all in one take as well. Now, depending on the nature of your video, you might need to record some extra footage as well that you can use as inserts. A long video of someone talking is not normally very engaging, which is why you'll want to switch it up often with clips of other videos or with images. One way to do this is by collecting a B-roll. Now, this is insert footage of the product you're reviewing, of your location, or of anything else that is related to your subject matter. The way you'll then use this is to have your audio running continuously in the background and then switch the footage of you speaking for footage of your products or of the environment. Collecting B-roll is a definite skill and will involve using the tracking head and tripod as discussed earlier. Try checking out technology videos from the likes of Android Authority, Techno Buffalo, and The Verge, amongst others, and you'll find they always include shots of phones and computers next to pens and paper, or by running water, or in the middle of grass and plants. In any case, the environment helps to showcase the beauty of the design and engineering, and it makes the shot more interesting yeah, than just a simple shot of a phone in someone's hands. This shows off that lifestyle again, and it makes everything look attractive and desirable. Once again, you can always record more than you think you're going to need. You'd be surprised of just how quickly you can run out of B-roll while talking, so get as many shots as you can possibly think of. You can also use other types of insert footage. For example, you might want to use footage of yourself working out while talking about fitness, or you might want to use clips from other YouTube videos, you know, being careful about copyright, of course. The latter you can accomplish by using various tools that allow you to download YouTube videos. A good choice is Hyper for YouTube, which you can download for free from the Windows Store. There are all manner of other ways to collect fun footage too. You know, how about using a time lapse, for example? Timelapse Pro is an app for Android, iOS, and Windows, and it's perfect for creating time lapses of all kinds of things. Once everything is done, you're ready to edit your video. Open it up in your chosen video software and import it along with all the additional graphics, sounds and other materials you intend to use. You now want to sync up your audio to your video and most programs offer easy ways for you to do this. In Adobe Premiere, for example, it's a simple matter of right-clicking on both and then selecting synchronize and then buy audio track. Now the audio will be in sync and you can just put the video on mute so that it's replaced by the high quality audio you recorded separately. Now just link the audio and the footage so that any edits you make will affect both as though they were recorded at the same time from the start. You'll want to line all this up so that you have all your footage in order and so that there are no awkward pauses. It's also important to keep things moving and to keep things dynamic all the way through. If you're using lots of B-roll, then you should make sure you move from panning shot to panning shot. You know, it should never be motionless or you'll lose focus. So make sure that you record lots of footage so that you have lots to work with, but then edit heavily too so that you're losing lots of it. Once everything is in order and the sound is lined up, you can then start to insert your extra footage and lay this over the top, you know, intersperse it. Normally, you'll keep the audio going continuously and just cut back your video as you do this. If you watch the aforementioned Android Authority videos, then you'll notice that they tend not to have much of themselves talking at all. They have a clip at the start and at the end and perhaps one or two in the middle and the rest is all B-roll. Finally, Try adding the video opener, any bottom thirds, and your logo and your music, and make sure that you get the audio balance right with the music, and consider using a small introduction before the opener. These final touches will give your video a real air of professionalism while helping to really drive home your branding. Now you just need to save your video in a format that YouTube likes, such as MP4, and then start to upload it to your YouTube account. 
all this can take a fair bit of time, so be sure to leave yourself time unless you have a really fast connection. And this will be even truer if you're using 4K footage. A tip is to use Chrome to upload. Google made Chrome and they own YouTube, so the two play nicely together. If your upload is interrupted and you're using Chrome, then you'll be able to resume it from where you left off later on, even if the computer's been turned off. While your video uploads, you can use the time to fill out a few of the extra details that YouTube requires from you. YouTube will ask if you want to monetize your video with ads, for example. And of course, the answer is yes, as long as you aren't overtly selling anything in it. Likewise, you'll be able to write your title, your description and your keywords. Make sure that your title is descriptive of your video while also being something that people will want to search for and something that people will be tempted to click on when they see it. We'll go into this in more detail in a subsequent video. Finally, make yourself a thumbnail to act as the image that people are going to see before they click on your video. If you don't do this, then YouTube will select a still from the video itself. And while this can work, it might not give potential viewers the right impression of what your video is all about. The right thumbnail image can make a huge difference by making your video much more appealing and impressive looking when it appears in the feed. Want to be a big sensation or just make money on the platform but don't like the sound of getting in front of the camera? Now, that might seem like something of an insurmountable problem, but the good news is that there are plenty of ways you can get around this problem and create footage for YouTube without needing to film yourself. Here are just a selection of different options for you that work very well. And one easy option is to record footage of gameplay on your favourite games. This is something that is very popular on YouTube and of course you don't need to go in front of the camera at all for it. You can choose to include commentaries or even upload videos with no commentary. You know, both are popular and both are very easy to create. The best part is that there are so many popular games out there, many of which don't get much content made for them. Choose the right game and you can find its fan base, quickly exposing your channel to a huge audience. Check out ASAP Science if you want an example of a great channel that doesn't include any footage of the creators. This channel uses an animation drawn on a whiteboard with a voiceover in order to explain a number of interesting scientific concepts. It's a great channel that has a lot of subscribers and it's something you can do yourself quite easily with the right software. Software like Video Scribe which you can find here at videoscribe.co, will enable you to do this quite easily. And as you can see, there's a free trial at the time that I'm making this video. Another great option is to make your videos using still images and slideshows. There's no reason you need to have an actual animated footage in your videos. And if you choose the right images, you can simply record a voiceover and that will do nicely. This essentially becomes much more of a podcast than an actual video, but it works very well and a number of creators have managed to become very successful using this strategy. One of the very best examples out there is the amazing Mr. Sunday Movies. This creator makes funny videos about pop culture films. While he never goes in front of the camera, he is very well known thanks to his hilarious comments and regular uploads. Interviews also work very well in this format. A top 10 apps video, a top 10 fight scenes video, or any other top 10 can be made by stringing together footage that you have acquired without there even necessarily being any reason for you to narrate. You can use captions, title cards, or just leave the videos themselves to do the talking. This brings us to the option of creating supercuts, edits, and mashups. Just take a look at the popularity of Cassette Boy, who makes videos that string together footage of famous people making them say funny things. 
Then there's the incredibly popular Cinema Sins that cuts together mistakes in blockbuster films and then points out the mistakes they made in editing, etc. Another great example is People Are Awesome. These are simply montages of people doing incredible stunts. As long as you make sure you're okay to use the footage you choose, there's no reason that you can't make similar montages yourself. Tech tutorials in particular are very easy to make with no need to go on camera. This is because you can make them by simply using screen capture software on your computer. There are plenty of great tech tutorials that work like this, including tutorials for programming, for using certain software, or for solving computer problems. Cat videos are huge, and if you have a willing cat, then there's no reason you can't set up some funny videos yourself. Likewise, there's nothing to stop you making funny videos of dogs or other animals creating elaborate structures and knocking them down, or otherwise using objects if animals and the environment are to be the subject of your videos. One very popular YouTube channel is the Slow Mo Guys. These guys bought a super high-speed camera long before they were commonplace and used them to film all sorts of things in slow motion. For example, they might film a bullet going through a watermelon, a water balloon, a firework or someone getting punched. All these things they did with themselves being on camera, but there's no reason you couldn't do something very similar with no need to go on film yourself. Even a product review can be conducted entirely without you making an appearance on screen using only B-roll. So now you know the types of video you're going to create and you know what your workflow is going to be like. The next question is, what makes a great video? There are a number of answers to this question and actually what makes a great YouTube video is not necessarily the same thing as what makes a good video generally. But there are certainly some things that will help you to make your video more successful and more popular on YouTube. So follow these tips to take your video creation to the next level. Statistically, Videos on YouTube that are shorter tend to do better. And in fact, this will also help you out as it means you can upload several videos a week rather than just one. Now, how long is optimum? Well, generally, the official recommendation is that your video be between three and three and a half minutes. However, anything under 10 minutes is generally going to be fine. There's a chance you might struggle with this, however. After all, a lot of people will find that they want to cram in lots of extra information and make their videos as informative as possible. And of course, this is a very admirable objective. The answer is not to make your videos less informative or less detailed. Instead, focus on breaking them down. If you have one video that covers every single aspect of brain training, then try to make three videos instead, each taking a different specific aspect of your subject matter. Another way to make your videos shorter and more impactful is to cut out the fluff. People click on videos because they want answers to a question or because they want entertainment. Thus, your objective should be to try and provide them with those things as quickly as possible and not to fill your videos with long, unnecessary chatter. Instead, just get to the point right away. The worst thing you can do is to film a video that makes you seem like someone who is completely bland and uninteresting. But unfortunately, this happens a lot. And it's not because the people making those videos are bland and uninteresting. Rather, it's worth noting that the camera will sap energy and if you're being somewhat charismatic, then that's not enough. Be big, loud and enthusiastic, almost as though you're acting what you're saying, and you'll find that it actually comes across as being a lot less over the top when you're watching it back. You just have to increase your energy levels. Meanwhile, let your sense of humour show. Let your personality and preference come across and try not to just read your script as though you were reeling it off in an English class. It takes practice, but don't worry. This will come with time and the best way to learn is just to practice. Also, it's very important to stand out and be different. You know, Try to offer something in your niche that isn't currently being offered rather than just making a rehash of what's already out there. 
In other words, if you're making a fitness channel, then try to stay away from how to get abs videos. You know, they're done to death and there's too much out there already for you to really offer something new. How about posing a question that no one else has answered? Or maybe approaching a subject matter in a new way? You could create a training regime that's inspired by the movies. You, know, you could use an unusual item to work out with, or you could train in the rain. Either way, you'll be creating something that's unique and different, and that means that when people are scrolling through their YouTube home, they'll be more likely to pause when they come to your offering and perhaps try it out. We talked about this a bit already, but try to make sure that your video is high energy. In other words, avoid long pauses between your speech, avoid long static shots, and generally keep the movement up. And this is what will make your videos engaging and will keep people watching. With what we've said so far, you should now have a good idea of how to run your channel and keep adding new exciting content. But at first, you're going to find it a wholly unrewarding process. You'll upload your first video after spending ages working to get it just right, and then no one will click on it. If you're lucky, your first video might land you a hundred views, and it will probably take months to get to that point. More likely, you'll have three views, and one of them will be your mother. Then you have to make another video, and another, and it'll feel like you're wasting all that time and effort. Well, the first thing to recognize is this is not a waste. For starters, you're building your audience this way, but at the same time, it's worth noting that you'll be able to reuse your old footage. You know, there's no reason that you can't promote those old videos once you have a much bigger audience, so don't worry if nobody sees them right away. And at the same time, you should start looking at ways to help people find your videos and begin generating momentum for your channel. Now, there are a few different things that you can do here that will help. Now, Let's take a look at them. Now, this might sound very obvious, but of course, making content with a very popular subject matter is going to help you get more views. And better yet, making content that has a big dedicated audience, or that is not an overly crowded audience, will help you to stand out and get noticed amongst the crowd. Let's say you're making opinion videos about computer games. A great way to make sure that you get noticed is to make a video about Sonic the Hedgehog. Sonic is a somewhat divisive figure in the video gaming community, but there is a huge die-hard audience for him out there. If you make a video on Sonic, you can almost rest assured that it will get thousands of views and likes just from people searching for new content on their favourite mascot. Got a football channel? Then how about making a video about a smaller local team? There won't be that much content out there on this team, which means those fans will only have your video to satisfy their appetite. Again, this can be a good way to find a huge audience and build on it. Got a fitness channel? Well, try making a video on Bruce Lee. He's such an iconic figure that nearly any video on him is bound to get tons of likes and follows. YouTube uses numerous different metrics in order to determine if a video is popular and whether it should be promoted. One of these is how long the video is viewed for and how often it gets likes. So if your videos get watched all the way through every time and get thousands of likes, then your channel is going to look very popular and you're going to see your videos climbing the ranks of YouTube. This is another very good reason to make your content shorter because it means that 3 minutes is now 100% of your video instead of 20%. Another tip is to give your viewers a reason to stick around. Tell them at the start of your video about something exciting coming up at the end, for instance. If you were trying to promote a website, then one of the ways you'd do so would be to use keywords. These are terms that people regularly search for when they use Google, and by lacing these into your content, you can ensure that Google will make the connection. Well, you can't do this in your videos because Google can't search the content of what you're saying. Well, yet. But what you can do 
is choose relevant keywords to add to the video when you upload it. Now, these should be things that people are likely to search for, as well as things that will make your video come up in the suggested videos at the right time. The way to get this right is to look for popular subjects, but at the same time, you want to make sure that the phrases you pick really are relevant. You know, you're not trying to trick people into watching your videos here. All that will do is to get them to turn off very quickly. If you want to find good search terms, you can use Google AdWords Keyword Planner. Now, this will tell you what people are searching for on Google. And it might be different from what people are searching for on YouTube, but it will nevertheless be similar, at least. But you can also just use a little common sense here. When you create your videos, try to think what people might be searching for when looking for that content. It works very similarly to hashtags in Instagram or on Twitter. Likewise, you can also use keywords in your video title and even in your description. In general, it's important to make sure you add lots of content to your description and write about what viewers can expect to see in the videos. Not only can this be a great way to offer more additional value to your visitors by letting them sift through the key points, but it'll also give YouTube more content to use to learn about your videos. You have a YouTube profile, and this is something that can also come up in searches. So you want to optimize this for YouTube SEO, in other words, search engine optimization, just as you're optimizing your videos themselves with the keywords and descriptions. This means making sure you fill out your about page by adding lots of content into your description section. In your home page, you can also make your channel more appealing by adding playlists so that people can quickly find different types of content from you. And this way, you can separate your content into different categories. You can also create a channel advert, which will be a video that introduces people to your channel and encourages them to subscribe. Add a profile image, a banner image, and be sure to link all of your social media accounts as well. All of this will help YouTube see that you're on the ball as far as content creation goes, which in turn will mean your videos get more promotion. So let's say someone is watching a video in the same niche as your channel and they see your video come up as a suggested video because of the keywords you used. If you have the right thumbnail and the right video title, It'll make your video appealing enough that people just can't avoid watching it. A brilliant example of this comes from Yo Elliot. Elliot Hulse is a strength training YouTuber who talks mainly about lifting weights and getting stronger. But despite this, he's managed to become almost a household name and is well known outside of fitness circles. Why? Because of his Yo Elliot series. These feature him asking questions that viewers have. These really speak to that value proposition that we discussed earlier and talk about things anyone can relate to and benefit from. These are the things that will get an emotional reaction from people and that they will think can help make their lives better. You know, just check out some of these video titles. How to approach women. Give many orgasms. How to destroy self-doubt. Masturbation gives me energy to work out. How to confidently command respect. When is it okay to fight? You know, what guy doesn't want to give women mini orgasms and confidently command respect? Whatever you think about this kind of content, there's no denying that it certainly stands out and it's easy to see why people click on it. And even if you think it's probably garbage, a lot of people will click on it just to see what kind of garbage it is. It's interesting to see what he's going to say. You don't need to use this exact method, but just keep in mind that you can make your titles much more clickable by offering something that promises real value, that stands out, and that people will really want to hear. Finally, there's no reason you can't simply post your videos in order to share them. You know, don't be afraid to post your videos on Reddit or on Google Plus in the relevant communities. 
This way, you can find the audience that will enjoy your content the most and get a lot of quick views. The tips in the last video will all help people to find your videos. But there are also some basic marketing strategies you can opt to use to help your channel grow faster overall too. Watch any of the big YouTube channels and you'll find that they end in pretty much the same way, with the creators asking their viewers to like, share and subscribe. This is the simplest way to get more subscribers and it works very well. A lot of people are more than happy to like your content, it just doesn't occur to them or they don't realise quite how much it helps you. Just asking can make all the difference by making it easy and reminding them. Another very important tip when growing your following on YouTube is to look for other YouTubers that you can partner up with. If you watch any big channel, you'll find that very often it will work with other big channels and feature guest appearances from other creators or just mention those other creators. A channel that does this very well is Vsource, which features answers to many fascinating questions. Michael Stevens is the creator of this channel and he is almost always recommending other creators or having them come on to talk about their areas of special knowledge. This is essentially influencer marketing. It means you're finding an influencer, in other words, anyone with a large existing audience, and getting them to promote you. The key to success in this arena is not to try and be too ambitious right away. In other words, you're probably not going to get a shout out from Vsauce unless you're already pretty huge. Instead, Try and find someone who is about the same size as you and in a similar niche and ask if they want to do a crossover video with you. This way, you both stand to gain by exposing each other to your respective audiences. This will give you a boost in numbers, which means you can try and reach out to someone even larger next time. If you don't have any luck with this right away, you can also try just giving people free mentions and you may find that those creators are flattered by it and see fit to do the same for you in kind. Try not to view other creators in your community as your competitors. Instead, view them as colleagues and think of the niche as a community of creators. This way, you'll be able to ingratiate yourself into that community and work with them to help get yourself known, while delivering something new for their viewers. Of course, YouTube's advertising platform is not just a way for you to make money. It can also be a way for you to spend money on your own adverts. This way, you can create an advert that will show at the start of other videos and bring people to your channel. This costs money though, so it's not going to be a good option unless you already have a good form of monetization set up, and that needs to be more than just advertising. If your YouTube channel is the start of an effective sales funnel that leads people to buy a high ticket item, you can calculate your LCV, that's lifetime customer value, and then decide how much you're willing to spend on ads. If you choose to go down this route, then it can be very effective. You know, just take a look at the success of Ty Lopez, thanks to his Here in My Garage ads, even if he is pretty much despised by half of the net. Finally, make sure that you aren't doing all of your promotion on YouTube. The best way to look at YouTube is as one part of a much broader strategy to build your brand and build trust and influence across the web. This means you should be on social media and this will give you a way to share your content as you build more followers. Think of this as a virtuous cycle and try to focus on the synergy between your social channels and your YouTube channel. You can ask people to follow you on Twitter and Facebook in your videos and then use Facebook and Twitter to bring more people back to your YouTube channel and hopefully get more shares among the broader network. This will help to make your brand feel more like a movement rather than a one-man show and should help you to build genuine followers. Your blog, meanwhile, can serve a similar role and you can use this to add additional content to your videos. 
This will make it easier for your videos to be found on Google and will give your fans a base where they can enjoy your content when they don't have the option of watching YouTube. The key to good branding is to be everywhere and just because YouTube is your focus, that doesn't mean you should ignore other channels. There's an awful lot to take on board here. But the most important thing to always keep in mind is that you're aiming to provide value and to offer something different. You can be smart about the way you do this in order to minimize your work and to maximize your exposure, but the key is to be genuine, to be interesting, and to really work on the quality and production values. It's also important to be consistent and to keep plugging away. You know, don't expect fame to come overnight and don't expect your first video to get a thousand views. This takes a lot of time and dedication and you need to be consistently and reliably churning out high quality video if you're going to convince people to subscribe and keep coming back. But if you're smart and you're determined, then there's no reason you can't make it with the very best of them. And once the hits start coming, things will start to take off fast. And trust me, it's more than worth it.